All right, let's now look at how we can use Excel's map charts to compare values across different geospatial regions. This is an interesting topic and I suggest paying attention to it, okay? Also, maps are very useful as a dashboard component. As you can see, I have Biocapacity and Eco Footprint Table. I took the data from the Footprint Network website and here is the link. To create a map chart, you must have some geographical data. Countries work really well. States, provinces, regions can also work depending on the country that you're working with. The scenario here is the following. Jim has a data set showing the varying biocapacities for different countries. He'd like to be able to compare these on a world map. He's going to do this using a chart map, okay? Now let's start by selecting our data. So I'm going to select B3 and C3 and then press Control shift down arrow. And then scroll up again or our chart will be created halfway down the sheet. Now we're going to come to our Insert tab and in the Charts group we're going to look for maps. A big disclaimer here, you'll need Office 2019 or Microsoft 365 to get this feature. When we click Maps, you'll see a filled map that we're going to click on to apply. If there's a problem and it doesn't recognize your geographical data, you will get an error bar at the top explaining that. But our own data is absolutely fine, and that's looking great. Let's make a few important changes though. In a moment, we're going to actually filter the data to allow us to zoom in on specific areas in the chart. But if I were to hide some rows, I'll just quickly demonstrate. I'm going to select some rows and I'm going to right click and hide the chart immediately and it minimizes. We need to be a little careful if we don't want our chart to resize when we change or hide our cells. We need to specify that. Let's stop there. I'm going to show you a pro tip that you can use to your map charts or other charts. This is also extremely useful for a dashboard when you want to lock the size of the charts. I'm going to click on my chart and control 1 or just double click to open the panel on the right. Now we're going to click on our chart options and just expand properties if you need to. You have a choice to move and size with cells, move but don't size with cells or don't move or size. It's that third option that we want in this case. We can also change the way the actual map projection is shown. I'm going to click somewhere into the data itself, for example Africa, and we're going to start by looking at our series options. This is our automatic map projection, but there are different styles of maps to choose from. You can have a look through. I particularly like the Miller one. You can also choose what map area you see. By default, it will show you all the regions covered in your data. If I only had regions in the US, it will show me regions in the US. You'll notice where there is no data for the region. It is grayed out. There are two other options, however. I can show only regions with data, and what that will do is hide all the regions that don't have data. You can see those grayed out areas have disappeared as has a little piece of Africa and a little piece of South America because we don't have data for those areas. The last option is World and that will always show the whole world map regardless of which areas have data. Now for ours we actually want to force it to zoom in on a particular area as we filter and for that we're going to need to use only regions with data. You can also specify what you want map labels. If I click show all, it tries to squeeze them all in, but a lot of them are not properly fitting. So I would actually recommend going for best fit only. And then we can also change our series color. This is bio capacity, so I think shades of green might be better. It does it on a sliding scale or a gradient if you like. So we need to specify our lowest value. I'm going to go for quite a pale green. Then my highest value, I'm going to go for a more vivid green. 
It just makes the map look a little more exciting. That's everything I wanted to do from the formatting panel. I'm going to close that up. Alright, a couple more tweaks though. Let's move our legend to the bottom of the chart. Okay, let's click the plus icon here. I'm just going to come to the legend and specify bottom. And let's give it a proper chart title. I'm going to triple check in there and type bio capacity. And now the map chart is looking great. But now we get to the exciting bit, being able to zoom in on those particular areas of the data by filtering our chart. We're going to actually create something called a slicer, which is a very intuitive way of filtering data. But in order to use the slicer, I have to have a table or a pivot table. Now, we had a look at tables in the previous lectures, but here's a quick reminder. I'm going to click on my data. I'm going to come to insert and I'm going to choose table. It automatically identifies the table data provided in your first row containing your headings. You can just say OK. Now it has added some funky formatting. If you don't like that, you'll see it on the table ribbon. You can switch it off altogether or you can go for something a little more to your taste. But more importantly, having added to our table on the table design ribbon, you'll see an option to insert a slicer, and that's what we really want. I'm going to click Insert Slicer. You can have as many slices as you have columns or fields. We want to filter by region though. I'm going to take region and say, OK. Now it's popped my slicer onto my sheet. I can move that across just by dragging it, and you can resize it using the resizer handles. From Slicer tab, I like to change the columns of the slicer, so to fit it below the map chart. Very cool, and you can format it as well. With your slices selected, you get a slicer ribbon and a gallery of slicer styles similar to our table. I'm going to go for the green. Nice. That's creating the slicer. Let's see how easy it is to work now. I'm going to click on to the Americas. It has filtered the data to only show countries in the Americas and filtering the data, I filtered my chart. There's Asia, there's Europe, if I want to just get back to my whole world, I come to the top right hand corner and clear the filter. Three really simple steps to create a totally interactive geospatial visualization. Start by inserting a map chart, convert your table to a data, and then insert a slicer. So whether you're starting out or looking to sharpen your Excel skills, this course is going to be your ticket to becoming an Excel pro. Check out the link in the description to start learning today. Thank you for watching till the end. Thank you for being here. And don't forget to like this video if you found some value in it. And do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll catch you in the next video.